This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents WTF Planet slash Galaxy slash Mothership slash Giant Tomato of Doom is that in front on the path of Comet Ison. One of the wonderful things about having your own YouTube channel, and I highly recommend it, is that if you have a question, you can then ask that question to the Earthling community via the YouTube. So that's what I'm doing here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a nerd geek dork, so I watch these sun cameras pretty much daily when I have the time. And so I've definitely been watching the HI2 ahead camera ever since they said Ison would be on it. And they gave us Ison's clear orbital. Ison's clear orbital. But as you will notice, there is a giant celestial body looking thing about on the same path as Comet Ison. What in this 2D form looks like, uh... I had a common ice. I know it's a 3D universe. Maybe even 8D. So I'm just putting this out there. What is this? I know it's not the Beehive Galaxy because the Beehive Galaxy is over here on this one. And I've made that mistake before. Well, I didn't make the mistake. I just said, hey, look, the Beehive Galaxy is flapping its wings. And it was. So I'm asking, what is this? It looks about six times the size of Jupiter. It's got a shape. It seems to react with the chronal mass ejections and flashes from the sun. Looks like it might be getting a little bigger. It is very well defined. So I'm putting this out there to you guys, you geniuses. I couldn't figure it out. What is this? WTF, man. WTF planet slash giant boob is this. And where some people may be kind of freaked out by one booby, just remember one booby is better than none. Am I right? All right. I mean, if you're freaked out by the girl only had one boob, then I guess you would not date Amazons because they used to cut off one booby so they could fire their bow better. That's a true story. Asterisk. Crap, I don't believe anything these days. And once again, when I said that it is in front of Ison, I recognize that this is 2D and that it is probably way behind Ison. But on the screen, it looks like it's in front of it. But if it is behind Ison, that means it's extra, extra huge. So you tell me. Somebody out there. I couldn't figure it out in any of my outer space science guy programs. Man, I wish this thing was in color, but we'll take what we can get. I gotta say overall, Comet C2012 S1 Ison does not look that impressive on here. Though, that little comet seems to have a new storyline every few days. Whatever it is, it's huge. Inquiring minds want to know. We're going to take another look real quick at the NASA Stereo Orbit Diagram. And you'll notice whatever this giant flying chicken is, I don't even know what to call it. I know that I get in trouble if I try and name stuff, even in a funny way. People shit their pants and then are like, I hate your guts. You know, seriously, so many people don't have any type of sense of humor. So if you look, it's on the exact same path as Ison. I don't know what it is. I tried to figure it out. Please don't tell me it's a beehive galaxy because I don't see how it can be in front and behind at the same time. But I'd like to know what it is. And there does other seem to be other little junk at the bottom. I'm sure it's, you know, something simple, like the G-String 69 Galaxy. Nah, that was stupid. And I guess, I guess Comet Ison is pretty tiny. Three miles and under, two miles and under nucleus. Nucleus. What if I never get my funny back? That's like one of my main seven superpowers. Then I'll be normal. Well, except for the other six superpowers. But still, like being funny is one of the rarest skills that people have today. Like, how many people do you know that are really funny? Like, these days? Not many. Seriously. There aren't a lot of funny people. I wish there were a lot of funny people. Because we all like to laugh. And people who are usually funny are usually good at conversation. And if there's one thing I've learned over the last decade of social networking, most people's ability to engage in a good conversation is dead. And so it's hard to be funny with people who don't know how to have a good conversation. Anyway, which is why I got all excited about YouTube because... I could be funny all by myself on the YouTube, but now, crap. If the bad guys have stolen my funny powers, then, then, dang. Oh, hey, wait. I studied screenwriting. There's act one, act two, and act three. What I'm feeling right now would be called the nadir moment. All is lost. But I know that when that funny comes back, it's going to be roaring and overpowered. Hallelujah. God bless everyone. Don't let the bastards get you down. They're multiplying like Agent Smiths and zombies. And they're mad because you're happy. So stay happy. It makes them mad. And you don't even mean to make them mad. So you don't have to suffer any of the negative karma. All right. All right. Thanks, Astonishers. Y'all have a good weekend. And uh, I'll see you guys around the bend. Peace out. God bless everyone. Stay strong.
that cool if you can. And I can't wait to hear an answer to this thing. Okay, great. Peace out. Happy Sunday, y'all.